If you're building out a smart home, there are actually three things that you want the smart home to do. Sometimes you want your smart home to be automated and to do things behind the scenes without you actually thinking about it. Sometimes you want full control and you want to be able to click a button or use a voice assistant to trigger a routine or an action. But sometimes you want something that's in the middle. Maybe most of the time it does it automatically and then sometimes it actually prompts you or sends you a notification giving you some various options and buttons. In today's tutorial, that's what we're going to be exploring. We'll be looking at actionable notifications in Home Assistant using Node Red. But first, a quick word from our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 1,500 classes. There's a lot of breadth and depth on Skillshare. You can do things like learning piano or learning how to start a voiceover business on Fiverr. In particular, I'm going to be picking up some sight reading piano skills. Thanks to Build Piano Skills, Music and Notations by Elijah. I'm also always trying to improve these videos here on YouTube with video editing with Final Cut by Ali Abdal. I also decided to try out the platform as a teacher and I created my own course called How to Produce quality videos fast on YouTube. I know there's a lot of focus on gift giving in this season, but one of the biggest gifts that you can actually give yourself is uh, time uh, to be creative and to pick up new skills, specifically also during the holiday seasons. The first 1,000 people that sign up using the link down in the description below will get Skillshare for one month for free. So this over here is the actual template that I'm going to be sharing with you today. So the way this is actually structured, there's a comment over here. And this comment will just is a bit of a reminder of actually step-by-step step what uh, I would need to do when I'm copying and pasting this template to actually create a new actionable notification scenario. Last part over here is actually what you will actually, the first flow gives the notification to the phone and to the device. So that gives you that pop-up and that gives you these options that you can select and which we'll look also at it later. The second one over here is whenever you press one of those two buttons, it triggers an event in Home Assistant. This event then can trigger different actions. So we're gonna be using this catch-all mobile app notification block, and we're gonna be splitting that message, and depending on whatever, it's, whatever we've pressed, basically we could have an on and off. Consider one scenario. If you have multiple of these, you could actually have either one big switch with many options, or you could try to decouple it with several different switches and several different options here. So as you grow, this and I'm sure you are because this is gonna be actually really cool. So click on the plus sign and add a new flow if you haven't got it already. Double click on it and give it a name. I'm calling it notification template, then click done. For simplicity, I'm gonna be using an inject, which is something that I can just press this button and test the flow out. This could be anything that you want to do that could trigger this routine in the real scenario that you're building. I just personally don't like this timestamp name, so I just always go in and just double click and change it to start and click done. Now we need to add in the mobile phone notification part. For that, you're going to need the call service node. This You'll get this if you have Home Assistant hooked up with Node Red, or you have Node Red running on Home Assistant as an add-on. So drag that in, join the dots, Double click on call service over here, you can start configuring things. The thing that I would uh, look to doing first is to find out what device you actually are going to be notifying. In a service, scroll down to notify, click on service, and here you can find the devices. So I'm going to be notifying this mobile phone. If you can't see your mobile phone listed, perhaps try to install the Home Assistant app and then give everything a restart. So just click done for now. Now this is all good. This will just give us a notify, but you're going to need to build this area over here, the data area. And let me show you how we can do that. So looking at our example that we created earlier, you can see that there's a series of messages and this will seem super, super complex. But if I click on the three dots, we should see it in a bit of more structured way. So you can see this is actually JSON. So if you know JSON, you might be more familiar with this view over here. The visual editor could be another way in which you can visualize and understand what exactly is going on. The way this is structured is as follows. We have a message, 
which is defined over here. So this is the text of the message that we have on the notification that pops up. Under the data section, here we have two actions. One action has a, another action and another subtitle. So basically these two are the two buttons that you can uh, press, zero and one. Zero and one are more like an array expression. You can see array of two and each array, there's a bit of programming uh, language and knowledge starts with zero. So zero and one really don't mean anything. Don't worry about it. We're gonna define three uh, set of things, action, title, and, and I'm also adding this additional icon which is similar to the MDIs and you can it's optional so you need to set it and you can see that I've got these bracket notations which we gotta actually understand if you've done a little bit of ginger templating and if you've watched my master class for templating which I can link somewhere here or at the end of the video then uh, you already know what I'm talking about but we gotta get that slowly slowly click over here and change instead of expression JSON Go on the free double clicks. Now I'm going to paste the example that I had previously. But to be honest, the, really what you actually, the bare necessity is something like this. So if you had something like this first and we were to click done, done. And then what we could do is we could just test it. So I've got my phone over here. We need to deploy our changes first. So click deploy, close, and then start again. Now if you get this no connection error message, that's also fine. Sometimes it just takes a while after you've deployed for it to kick in and connect again, especially with these notification. Uh, but you see this went through now the second time round, and I'm gonna just kind of expand this so you can actually see this a bit better, let me see. So you should be able to see the home assistant notification with message. So once you've achieved that, yes, you haven't got the buttons yet, but you know you're on track. And at that point, you know that your notification is working. So always start with the simple, simplest version of anything that you're building out. And let's keep building on it now. You would have noticed that in my template example, I'm using these brackets. So let's start introducing this bracket in and let's see what that actually does. So I'm adding this message with these curly brackets. This actually means that it's going to be a variable that I'm going to be setting. So, so far so good, I can have this as done. This will now not really work really that well. So I need to break this chain move this a little bit and then start adding another component here. Now for this, I'm using something called a change node. Now this sounds a bit weird, um, change, change what? But think of it as it's setting, it's declaring. So it's, it actually defaults to set message.payload. So if we just double click on it, so let's read it. set. And then there's a message, a flow or a global and there's dot, so this means that this is a uh, parameter, right, linked to the message, and payload, I mean, we can type anything we want. So here, I'm just gonna be putting like message. So message uh, is crucial that you call it exactly in that way, or in whatever you've got in your curly brackets, in your notify uh, section. So I'm gonna be adding something like this, or oh, hello world, let's go with that. So I'm gonna click on done, and now what I just do, I just drag these together, I deploy the changes, I give it a sec, and we'll give this a go. You should be able to see that now, we've got our hello world. We've succeeded in our second step, our third step, now is to introduce one button, and once we've figured out how to do one button, we can then add the second button, and then I'm gonna show you how you can actually do things with those buttons. But first I'd like to ask you to like this video if you're getting value out of it and subscribe to the channel. We are close to getting to the milestone of 20,000 subscribers. That would be amazing. Thank you very much. So back to our template, this section over here under data is what we're going to need to configure that notification. So what you could simply do is either you could just get it in, but I'm gonna show you a simple version of doing this. So my um, preference is to use JSON, but you can always switch to visual editor and click things like insert below and configure it yourself. Or if you want to, you can just type this out yourself. But let me just point you in the right direction. First of all, this data a message need to be aligned. Actions need to be indented in. The uh, standard is for uh, spaces, as you can see by these little dots. It hopefully comes across in the camera. Then we have another four dots with these brackets. These brackets hold 
a certain definition that you can see over here in the actions. And the good thing with JSON is that you immediately see squiggly line, right? Expected comma, there's some sort of problem. So we need to figure this out and sort it out. First of all, after message, we need a comma. Done. So now that's no longer squiggly. So that's good. The second thing you'll notice is squiggly at the end. And it actually tells us expects a comma. But also, we also know that we've created a little array here because we can have multiple actions, and but we didn't actually really close it. So now in the square bracket, you can see the square bracket now closes this effectively. And data over here, we still have this message with data and the uh, graph parameter because we need basically another closing graph uh, curly bracket. So that closes this. So you can see with these lines, it sort of tells you what each part is. So this part is the data part, this is the whole JSON, and this is your square bracket. So now that we've got this done, you're gonna be asking your question, well, what the hell is this? So you can start with anything you want. The action is going to be an internal Home Assistant message, right? So it's gonna be something that you're not gonna be actually seeing, but you're gonna be using later. So this part is to tell something to Home Assistant. The title is actually to tell you, me and you, the user, Right, so it will appear on your phone. And the icon is just for aesthetics. This is like a little bell icon, click on done. You might have guessed, yes, it's again, another set message, set parameter. So you could just drag a new one in, right, and configure it. So you could sort of do something like this and say, well, after that you've set the message and I want you to set this new set of parameters, similar to what I've done over here in in set actions, or you just simply expand this so you can click on and add underneath here, and then you can just set a new message, uh, a new uh, parameter. So let's have a look and actually, what do you need to set? So there are like four things to set to have two buttons. So you need two each and they go in tandem. So I've simply called these action one and action two, perhaps, I would suggest you use a better name. So maybe action, turn lamp on, action, turn lamp off. So you could share multiple actions with multiple uh, scenarios that you build out. The action title one is specific for, uh, is basically linked to action one. So this is like the text. So what the actual message we're gonna be sending to, to the phone. So keep the lights on. So do you wanna keep the lights on is the question. Um, and you can see this is written like in normal English, uh, whereas this has like underscores and capital letters, meaning like it's for more for a computer to understand. So most of the time, if this doesn't work, it's because you haven't set this part up correctly or intentionally. So um, have a quick look at it and, and try to relook if in case you have any issues. Now that that's done, you can see that the first flow is nearly complete. If you want to, you can add a debug message, debug node, and just take this debug window. And this will use the whole payload. So it's gonna look at basically everything, everything that's passing through uh, the message. And it's gonna figure out if uh, you've gone, some, gone somewhere wrong. So add it in if it, it helps. And it helped me when I was doing this uh, too. The second part is uh, this part over here. So what we need to do is, the first thing we need to do is use this all events node, edit, so you can see these events. So we give it a name like all mobile app notifications. So this is like a, basically a catch all scenario. Now I would highly recommend that you just don't type this out yourself. You just copy and paste it because it's exactly the same. So what I'm doing, I have the payload, the topic and an event type. And you can actually see this over here. Um, this is super, super, it's just a bit of technical stuff. I'm not gonna go into the details of this. Uh, because really there's nothing to configure here. This is just something that you could just need to add yourself. What it's doing is it's just, it's just tracking polling events and then it passes that event along. So this is, is looking for this. You could actually have this flow on an entire different um, actual sheet or flow in, in Node-RED or you could have some of this in Home Assistant as a Home Assistant automation and some like this part you could have it in node red for example so it doesn't really matter how you display it do it the way it's easier for you the important part is a switch so you're going to need to add a switch node to this whole thing the switch node you're going to need to set a couple of things really important first of all the property uh, the message needs to follow the certain pattern payload.event.action 
and this is the, is the basically the structure of the nest and you just need to do this exactly in the same way the two parameters are the ones that you can configure so you remember i told you about those um commands these messages that only home assistant can understand well turn underscore lamp underscore on is something that is only for home assistant for this event no tracking so it knows what to do and the double equal basically means uh, equals two but it's a comparative equal and not a uh, basically assigning a value to so th that's why we have the double equal because it's a bit of a, a programming uh, language quirk and the cool thing is that you'll have these two branches so one of them is the first one at the top you actually if you go over it it highlights and it tells you turn underscore lamp on so you know that that and then you have the one underneath which is the second one so if you add a third one as soon as you click add and go done you can see now you've got three um so you just carry on and you can use the uh, x to get rid of it and then click done so you go back to two awesome so these two are just simple uh call services so we've done this before with call service and uh, this is what uh, particularly uh, I'm doing for this test. So turning this lamp on, this lamp behind me, and then you just set the domain as light, service as turn on, the entity as uh, whatever it's called. So that's done. And the second one is very similar. It's just doing a turn underscore off, which tells our missus to turn uh, the lights off. And you can see this sort of all done. So I'm just gonna give you a bit of a demo to show how this works. So I'm gonna click this start. I'm gonna simulate some sort of Thing happening so now this has triggered this home assistant you should see it over here actionable notification now if you click hard press on it you can actually see two options the first option and the second option you also see a little bell that I mentioned earlier so we're gonna test it off so the lamp is on I am actually gonna be tapping off and it goes off and you can actually see that the uh, node red sort of updated the flow. So at 21.49, the notification dropped, then this triggered, and then it went back to this turn lamp off, 21.49. So the last time I tested it was 21.12, when I actually was testing this before recording the video. So let's try the other scenario. So we wanna turn it on. So now I'm gonna click again, start. We've got a new notification here popping up. I'm going to hard press, at this stage, you can see that I've got the 2150 notification there, so you know this is live, and nothing has changed either here or either there, so, and the light's off. So I'm gonna tap on to keep the lights on. The light turns on, as you can see, and 2150, also this is on. If you wanna get your hands on this template too, you're gonna to find details in the description down below on the how to do that. I'm gonna leave you with my Home Assistant Templating Masterclass right over here. I'll see you in the next video. This was Jim from Smart Makers. Ciao.